You're listening to the Heroes Power Hour, presented by BlizzPro.com. Your hosts, Balrog Fan, Zexorus, and DJ Tyrant. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to the Heroes Power. This is episode 124 for November 21st, 2017. I'm your host, DJ Tyrant. With me is the crew, P Flame G and Zexorus. Thanks for coming by and checking us out. And let's just get into our week in games, or cup last couple weeks in games. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've been on the air, but uh, Zexorus, how have you been? What have you been up to? I've actually probably played more heroes in the past couple weeks than I have. One of the teams from Rec League, uh, which we, I cast Thursday nights over on uh, Nexus Commentaries, they just randomly invited uh, one of the teams, Trog Squad, who was with us for the pre-show games today, um, just randomly invited me because they needed a fifth. And I ended up having an absolute blast with them. Uh, they were they're a fun bunch of guys. They they play the game like I I, I want to play. They entertain my stupid ideas like Assassin Tassadar. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say who what what certain Protoss have you been playing lately? <laughs> I have played more Tassadar here in the recent weeks than I have I can remember playing ever. Like I had mm-hmm. them, I already had them to master, but I didn't really play them that much. But like just here recently, I like that's all I've played. It's just Assassin Tastar, and it's probably a really bad idea if I'm honest, because that's like just setting me up on one build <laughs> over and over. And yeah, over. but isn't but that kind of, the, of isn't that kind of the beauty of heroes though? Is you can do silly stuff like this. Yes, um, and they have a they have this these guys have a beautiful mix of try harding and just messing around like it, it there's no, there's no gray area like you're not they always and they always ban chill or golf they just hate chill golf but that's um, understandable yeah but aside from that i've gotten into diablo 3 again um I ended up playing like six hours of it this morning. I had a friend power level me the previous night. Played for like six hours. Listened to Toto or Africa by Toto for like three hours and forgot the song was still running like an hour into it. And then like hour three came around. I started getting hungry and I'm like, wait, why is this song still playing? That's funny. Yeah, that's uh, that's been my couple weeks. It's been a, a... a real enjoyable experience with heroes again and i'm, I'm really happy that i'm having fun again with, that's uh, uh, that's awesome this. uh so. carl carl how about you have uh how's heroes been treating you and other stuff uh heroes has been good i've been playing hang on okay we're hanging on because something is happening in the background all right we're good there we go um so yeah, I've been playing some, uh, just a couple unranked games every couple days. Uh, nothing too special. Um, I'm excited to try Alexstrasza, but I don't have the gold to buy it right now, so I'll do it when her price drops. But nothing very eventful. Well, that's, that's good. Uh, I've been playing not as much Heroes as I normally have been. I've kind of been playing other stuff, and uh, the real big game that really sucked me in Lately, it's been Super Mario Odyssey on Nintendo Switch, and that game is really it. the The main game, quote unquote, is really short, but then it opens up like crazy, and there's just a huge amount of depth to playing through that game, and it really rewards you for being creative at finding solutions to puzzles and stuff. So, if you have a Switch and you haven't picked that up, I would highly recommend it. It's a really solid game. Um, but yeah, hero stuff been playing mostly unranked draft just because quick match 
tilts me so greatly. Well, I mean, it does and it doesn't. Like, I don't care what happens in a quick match anymore. I just, it just is what it is. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what that is. And I finished up the, uh, the Halloween quest stuff for, I don't know why, for a silly portrait that I used for like a day. <laughs> but, I, I quickly become with Carl that I absolutely loathe quick match at this point. Like, you finally did it. You won me over. Sometimes I'm like, all right, I need to level Keldazad or some new hero. I'm going to play him in quick match. And then I play a game in quick match, and I'm like, this is a mistake. And I just close (laughs) heroes for the week. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's... uh... I didn't play. I, I played like two games of quick quick match with the the Trog Squad guys, mm-hmm. like, and they were both just awful mistakes. Like one of them, we lost by like five levels. I don't even know how that's possible, but uh, it happened. That well, we just won that game by basically five levels that we played earlier, right? Yeah, pretty much. It was I mean, like, that, was that really a game? Because that kind of felt like an AI game. Well, they they. Uh... They played what was it, Sonya Malthale yes. in into a double support double warrior comp. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. With the two strongest heal, well, yeah. Mal- Malfurion and Morales, <laughs> and they they had an Illidan, and I'm pretty sure they were kind of relying yeah. on that Illidan. Yeah, uh, and Morales. Yeah, and I I have to say, I I enjoyed the Moonfire build. That was I fun. See, God bless you. Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Is but it, is it not just the the feel good? It's like Assassin Tassadar. Like it it doesn't it shouldn't work, but it does. And when it yeah. works, it feels really good. It does. It does for sure. <laughs> but uh, really quickly, we're gonna jump into some some new stuff. Uh, something we haven't done really before, but, uh, some shop updates for today from the game. We'll show you guys what's going on there. Uh, obviously the Alex Raza skin bundle is still there with all our controversy and all that. So go check that out if you're really wanting to play Alex Raza. Uh, there's a back in black Friday bundle. Um, it's a lot of, uh, dark theme skins. So check that out if you like uh, dark themed skins, like the Dark Ariel or the Dead Walker War Matron Cassia, which makes her look undead, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I don't know the exact price of that in gems because I have a couple of the skins already, so it's discounted for me. But uh, yeah, if you're watching the the VOD or live, you can kind of see us going through that a little bit. Uh, any thoughts on, on any of these bundles that are that are coming out i hate these kinds of bundles like i i understand them and everything but like i already own like half these skins and it's still gonna cost me 504 gems yeah and then like the the red and black friday bundle i i am missing the nightmare prime diablo and first ascendant Li ming and it's still gonna cost me 910 gems I'm missing four skins in the mount, and it costs it'll it will cost me fourteen hundred thirty five gems. Like, they, and it's tempting like, because there's one of the Dreadlord Jada skins in there. Yeah, like I, I really <laughs> feel like Blizzard needs to come down on like the di- discounts even more because I'm not spending that much money on three skins. I mean, fourteen thirty five is what? That's like uh, that's almost fifteen sixteen bucks. Fourteen thirty-five is about thirteen dollars because okay. you get one thousand six hundred sixty-four gems for the low, low <laughs> price of fifteen ninety-nine. You know how many cans of prongles I can buy with that much? <laughs> They're great. <laughs> Once you pop, that's great. Oh I'm my gonna goodness! Have to link that in chat. Yeah, chat. link that in chat. I'm sure people will appreciate that. But uh, yeah, a couple uh, bundles. Oh, uh oh. Are you not a moderator? No. Uh oh. Feels bad, man. No, well, what you count? Bad, which count are you on? Uh, Zexor's Heroes. Okay, like, that's why. JR, yeah, Jr. Never like modded that one. Okay. Oh well. Uh, it was n- funny laugh. 
for there you go for those uh looking for some discounts the nimbus cloud is 200 gems 50 percent off i will probably be picking that up just because i need my dbz kerosene complete like um so i want to touch on one particular thing and i have i have pretty sure i've complained about this the past three years okay is the 360 day stim pack oh oh yeah yeah that's coming i really want to buy that stim pack but i have to spend my money elsewhere and by the time black friday rolls around you know i'm i can't justify that purchase yeah it's a little over 50 bucks like if if you want to get that if they extended that into like December, I'd be all about it. Like the first week of December, I would buy it, no problem. I would be all over that, and I would be set for a year. But that's my only complaint. That's about that thing. I would love to have that because I wouldn't <laughs> have to worry about yeah a stim pack for a whole year. Yep. Uh, are you up on emojis? Do you have them all, or are you? I do. You need I. Some? I do not need any emojis at this point. I the quest continues. I have all emojis, and I am just I, I don't know why I'm so obsessed with that. I don't know why but either, I but I find it hilarious. Like I I had a real freak out because we were getting towards the end of uh, all hollows, and I needed like 300 more shards in order to get the remaining emojis from the event, and I I got a I got a loot box. And it dropped a ta- or dropped a zero tool, uh-huh. and four hundred shards right there. All right, there Lucky you go. Day. There oh, you I go. Burnt, <laughs> I burnt my luck out for the year. Yeah. Uh, what did I get? I got some something in a, a loot box that I was pretty happy about as far as skins. It was it was a Zul skin, for Halloween. Anyways, let's stop talking about skins. Talk about stuff that's happening in the Nexus. Alex Raz is live. We haven't gotten to talk too much about her. Um, I haven't even gotten a chance to play her yet. I've been busy, unfortunately, but she seems pretty good. I was I was bummed that they banned her when I was <laughs> playing unranked. I was like, really? As Carl, I Carl said, no fun. Hate people who ban new champions in unranked draft. You're the worst kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> Let people have fun. Like, uh, if it's ranked, whatever. But this is unranked draft. Let somebody pick Alex Straza. Yeah, and uh, the other kind of quality of life game updates uh, came out as well. The announcement of when both teams have heroics, which is kind of nice. 20s. In 20s. Um, but really, what we're looking forward to now is the PTR went up last night, or yesterday, with uh, our favorite Shimada Clan arrow wielder uh hanzo but also this is bringing the uh, performance map based matchmaking and game camera height as well as the stealth changes so all the stuff that was announced at blizzcon uh i expect this to be an extended ptr uh we'll probably get hanzo next week or the week after and then these changes sometime late or probably 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 early next year, I would I would guess. No, no, you not that late. So? You, don't, you no. don't think that late? Because what they wanted to do now, I, here's the part that was confusing me from their deep dive panel at BlizzCon. Blizzard wanted to do a three week PTR, so I don't know if Alex Straza started week one, and uh, the no. the balance. So you don't think so? So no. this is the start of the three week PTR. I would think yeah. so. And Hanzo doesn't hit PTR till next week. Like that's not Hanzo's live next week. That's Hanzo's PTR next week. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> so, um, but like I got to mess around with the PTR a little bit today and check out how, some of the changes. The how do you feel about the sexy. camera? Yeah, I love the camera. Is it, it is feels... it about the kind of length of when you're observer and do that first pan out? Yes. Okay. It is actually that. Oh, okay. That makes me very happy, actually. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, ridiculously happy. I had access to so much more information on the battlefield that I, I was just delighted. So that was that was a, that was a much-needed change. I didn't even know I needed that change. 
you know, until I like I like I saw it, you know, I saw watching the panel at BlizzCon and then I actually, you know, got into the PCR today and I was like, oh, my God, I can see so much more stuff now. This is mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, oh, the other thing I didn't even mention was all the Battleground uh, updates as well as the laning updates, too. Yeah. So that's all coming as well. Uh, we talked a little bit about that in our BlizzCon coverage, but the details, like the full details are out in the PTR patch notes. Um, I do like the more consistent battleground objectives, uh, activating 90 seconds into the match following a 30 second warning for Blackhearts, Braxis, and Dragonshire. Um, and then each, each one is a little bit of a different timer after that um, objective is completed. So... Dubloon chest spawned three minutes after the final chest has been captured. Braxis uh, beacon events now consistently spawn two minutes and ten seconds after uh, the last Zerg wave has been defeated. And Dragonshire shrines consistently spawn two minutes after a Dragon Knight has been killed. So, yeah, just nice, good things. Nice and simple, easy to remember. So that should help with like camp timings and stuff like that. Um, the are camps we just also doing... spawn at a minute. We're just going to like camp spawn. Oh, they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, are we get, just going to touch on these uh, lane changes here real quick or anything else? Um, I, if you want to talk about them, I think they're pretty significant. So, I mean, what do you, what do you think about them and what, what specifically are they doing to the game with these lane okay. changes? The, the thing that's most important to me um, and it's a buff to certain heroes and an incredibly large nerf to others. Let's talk about the ammo shots being removed. Towers and forts and keeps now have infinite ammo. Forts and keeps have true sight as a side note. But the infinite tower ammo makes Sylvanas a lot more effective now. She mm-hmm. is going to have so much more value on these maps because... There's no, you can't just push a creep wave up, rotate, and let the tower ammo drain. Now, on the other hand, this is a huge nerf to people like Chen. <laughs> oh. who, that, who, that was part of the Chen strategy. Push that creep, you know, get out to the side, be a little cheeky, start chugging, soak some tower shots, pull back before everyone comes and murders you, wash, rinse, repeat. You know, and now, oh, okay, that doesn't work anymore. So Chen is even further useless. But, oh, I'm sorry. He's in a good spot. Never mind. Oh, no bitterness there. Nope. No. Nope. Not at all. Not, um, not, not bitter. The other interesting thing is, I think we mentioned this before, but the standalone towers are gone uh, next to yes. Forts and Keeps. So their, their health uh, in the XP has been in the damage has been redistributed into the surrounding gate towers, forts and keeps. So now my, que- my, my question, my, qu- I have, I'm sorry. I know I jumped in. No, go you. for it. Now at the panel, they, they'd mentioned that they, if you'd paid attention, you'd notice they'd already done this on Volskaya, except for the true site for forts and keeps mm-hmm. that they removed that tower. Now the question, question to me is was that kind of a public play test to see how yeah. that would work out was it i think so basically I, too bad i've gotten Voskaya all of uh once <laughs> I've, i'm getting it consistently now well, that's good just play with me and trog squad more often <laughs> yeah exactly uh p flame i'm curious coming from kind of a league background what do you think of these tower changes um it's still they're not super comparable to league towers because they still prioritize minions and the walls make tower dives a lot weirder. But I don't know. I think I think it's a weird a weird change for what they wanted to do because they said they removed the ammo to incentivize pushing, but ammo incentivizes pushing, right? If you're just shoving your wave into their tower and they're losing ammo, you're accomplishing something. You're shoving your wave into their tower, and it doesn't actually do anything. Then it's not that big a deal. So I think it's weird that like they gave that rationale. Um, 
I mean, it's nice, especially when you end up in those bat, like you're like a tank versus a ranged matchup, and you're like, this is sucks, but my team needs me down here. And all of a sudden you run out of ammo, and you're like, well, I don't have any wave clear anyways. Like, it, it helps those lanes, but that's, I don't know if that was what they were trying to do. It does help those lanes, though. Mm. So, I don't yeah. know. It's weird. I do think it's interesting, though. Um, I just noticed this, that uh, we were talking about True Sight on Fortune Keeps now, uh, meaning they reveal and attack stealth heroes, but disable, it's disabled by uh, Raven's Lord Curse, so the Black, or, uh, Black Temple, the Cursed Hollow uh, objective, and also Black Arrow from Sylvanas. So I I hope we see some, some videos of Sylvanas setting up some like really silly stealth uh, combos with that that would actually be really sick i would love to watch like a, a, a black arrow gank with an invisible hero on to like an abathur or something like <laughs> i didn't i didn't know that i didn't know it would work so once it's a again, very tight timing yeah it is yeah. like you'd have to throw your haunting wave out the abathur wouldn't run away from the savannah's haunting waving forward and then your zero would have to run up immediately and get the damage with the abathur I mean, it could be done, but it would look sick. Like it would look amazing. Mm -hmm. but... Most definitely. Mm. Uh, but we're not going to go over too much of the mercenary stuff. We talked about that. I think uh, our post BlizzCon show, um, but make sure to check out the patch notes on that. Lots of numbers to go over and take a look at. Um, miscellaneous stuff, sandbox, custom game improvements. So they just keep continue improving that, which is nice. Uh, rank battleground rotation changing again so that's just going to be a continually changing rotation it looks like from uh blizzard going the forward. weirdest thing is they're already pulling volskaya yeah i don't know why it's weird I think, to me that that's leaving the rotation so soon i think they're tweaking i think they they're going to end up tweaking it a bit i, I like, mean maybe but I, I don't feel like it's that like, bad. Oh, Skya is unvalued. No, it's it, no, it's not. It's just, I I think the robot is slightly undertuned. I could agree with that. So I think I think they're gonna, I think we'll be seeing some adjustments to the robot at least. But mm -hmm. like, and it's a it's a either or. It's either like easy to take out, or it does way too much damage too quickly. Like we had, I, I played a game earlier today where like the first two uh, robots we got like didn't really do that much, and then the third one just ended the game just straight up. Like it tore through a keep and just went, we just face rushed the core and ta da. <laughs> so, like I'm um I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be some changes coming to that map here real soon. Yeah, there might be, but uh, what we wanted to do is dig in a bit to these stealth changes, which are affecting all the heroes that do use stealth, um, and they're also getting quite a bit of changes as well. Um, Nova getting baseline stacking snipe talent. Clones are going to deal bonus damage and bonus move speed when stealth. Um, yeah, that's so that's I a guess, really quick overview of it. Yeah, before we talk about this, I just I put a, a detailed list in the patch notes because we'd already kind of talked about post BlizzCon all these general changes that were happening. Mm -hmm. We said there are stealth changes, so I kind of wanted to dive into like here's yeah. what they are, right? And the biggest thing is that stealth is going to be easier to see, right? It is no longer going to be like a skill check to see if you can see the stealth heroes. Now it's mostly the fact that they're not targetable and they don't show up on the mini-map. Um, but they're still pretty visible, so you're not going to have, you know, like, oh, they appeared right next to me and I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of levels the playing field, and I think it's mostly just easier on the designers because they can say, okay, Valera is actually trash at high tiers, but she can just crush bronze players. Completely destroy them. And when, when everybody can see her, it's easier to balance. So a lot of the changes are generally buffs, um, but they're just general changes in here as well. So that said, you can, you know, Nova got her the snipe talent where every time you deal damage with your snipe, it gets stronger, but when you miss, it drops off. Yeah, snipe um, master. That, yeah, that's baseline, um, which is interesting because 
a lot of these are supposed to be just like strictly buffs, but like if you're just bad at using snipes on Nova, she's worse now because they nerfed her base snipe damage. <laughs> yeah, to compensate for having this uh, quest baseline. Yeah, uh, they yeah they they. So I played Nova today, and her snipe damage is garbage. Like it genuinely feels bad. Like late game Nova with you know fully stacked on sni snipe master now. It's kind of terrifying to deal with because you're you're running along down the lane and pop, pop, you lose like three quarters of your health bar, yeah. you know? And now it's like, that little jerk just tickled me, <laughs> you know? Like, it, it, they need to bump the damage back up on Snipe. Not, not to its original damage. Mm -hmm. But it, it could use a buff. Yeah, it could definitely use a buff because that's a that's a high risk, high reward baseline right there, mm -hmm. and right now there's essentially no reward. Yeah, and then the other things, um, the clones deal like ten percent damage is not much, um, so it should still be obvious when a clone hits you that it's a clone. Um, but if you're not paying too much attention, you see the damage flash. You could mistake them. And then she gets bonus move speed while she's stealthed, which should help her rotate between lanes. And that'll be helpful for dismounting someone on low health. Yeah. Like, if, if she's in the area, she can dismount them and then just pop them. Because, yeah. I mean, she's got movement speed, you know, bonus movement speed talent at one. And she's got, oh, well, and, and baselined into her trait. Yeah, move so. speed is, is actually an incredibly valuable stat in MOBAs. So this yeah. is actually a pretty good buff. Um, it's not in combat boost speed, which is unbelievably powerful stat. Mm -hmm. But it is move speed. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Ghost Protocol getting baselined in that. Well, it's a I, it's a talent at one, right? Right. Yeah. It, or no, it is game baseline. Yeah. It, it, right. it it's neat. I think it's neat. But I think I, I'm afraid people are going to try to use it like a cleanse. Like, you know. Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> you get rooted, you get rooted or something, and then you pop that invisibility. The panic and button. Kel, and then, yeah, and then Kel'Thuzad's like, oh, okay, I know exactly where you're at. And then just <laughs> yeah. bombs you, you know. So, but the five seconds, it, it, it will be good for getting out of dodge in a hurry. Mm -hmm. It's not good if you're already in the city limits. If you're already CC'd, <laughs> it's not good. But if, if you pop your combo and then you drop your invisibility before they actually get retaliation damage onto you, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I missed that when I went over at the patch notes to try to provide a TLDR. It's actually pretty yeah. significant. And the only reason I bring it up is because, I, like I said, I played her on the PTR this morning and mm -hmm. was not impressed. Nova's garbage now, and she's still pretty <laughs> garbage. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they decide to balance her in the next coming months with all these changes. Uh, but I wanted to move on to Samuro, which I think these changes are really interesting. Uh, TLDR, images deal less damage. Uh, you get to direct which clone you become. Uh, baseline clone swap now and the new ult uh, reduces the cooldown of advanced strikes to 8 seconds uh, increases the attack damage of the mirror images by 100% and increases basic attack damage of Samuro by 10% also they gave him a flat basic attack damage buff that I neglected to mention yeah so the direct yeah. clone you become <laughs> thing works like when you hit your your mirror image um you will become the one in the direction of your mouse. So yeah. if you haven't been playing with quick cast on, you better get used to it. Yeah. So instead of just like randomly showing up somewhere and then having to make a quick decision about, okay, I'm here now. Um, you kind of, you get to select it and enemy, enemy doesn't exactly know where you went, but um, the baseline illusion master is really nice. Or image transmission is what it's called. Mm -hmm. It's a 25 second cooldown. Um, you switch with the target mirror image and remove most effects. So, like poisons and stuff on you. 
I always thought that was a really like skillful ult. Like you could see some really cool plays with it. And then nobody ever picked it because Bladestorm's so good. Uh, so I'm glad we get to see <laughs> those those mirror image plays still. Like as frustrating mm -hmm. as Samur is going to be to kill with a baseline mirror image. Like from a spectator point of view, watching pros make use of him, he sees more play, <laughs> will be cool. Running into a Samuro in quick match will be very frustrating. <sighs> or it's going to be really hilarious because you're going to see all these new Samuros come in and you're going to be like, oh, I tore up the AI. This will mm -hmm. be easy. And then they just get clobbered all game. Cause <laughs> easy they keep, game, easy life. They keep, like, yeah, e hashtag E. G E L. I stealth in, <laughs> immediately pop all my clones, and then just sit there right clicking somebody. I'm gonna win, right? No. Nope. Exactly. Well, you have you have higher basic attack damage, base. So like, yeah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, the the thing that worries me about the, this chain, the, the the illusion change, is that Samuro is really strong as a jungler. Like that, being able to run around undetected, snap camps up, like that—that that was one of his strengths. And with the the illusions just tickling things now, it it <clears throat> worries me that that it it won't he won't be as effective in that that regard anymore. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting. To see how it plays out, and I'm I'm excited to jump back in and play some more Samuro, just because it's been a while since I've played him. Um, any other thoughts on Samuro? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, heroes that are just going to destroy people in quick match, uh, Valera is getting some changes, which. These these are going to be uh fun for those of you who do play Valera. Uh. Let's see what the TLDR added move speed and stealth. Stealth abilities to get range and more crowd control. So Vanish getting a, a pretty significant speed buff. Like we were talking about uh, Nova having that speed buff when stealth. Uh, when you Vanish, you get 20% movement speed increase. And if you're vanished for three seconds, Ambush has a range of five. Good God. Oh, stealth abilities. Ambush, Cheap Shot, and Garot. <laughs> Garrett? I don't know how to say that word. Garot. All have a range of five. <laughs> Garot. That's yeah. ridiculous. And teleport her behind her target. So you can now actually engage like engage from stealth, even though they can see you. Um, and then the her stun is now in, from a 1.25 second stun to a 0.75 second stun, but it blinds them for two seconds after the stun ends. And then uh, Garot, her E is a 2.75 second silence instead of a 2.25. Hope so, you guys don't want to play quick match anytime soon after this comes yeah, out. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that's oh all I'm going to play now is Valera. <laughs> oh, man. And a whole bunch of different uh, talent changes as well, but holy smokes. Like, she just seems incredible. Uh, Ambush did get its damage reduced a little bit, but it also reduces armor by 10 for 4 seconds as well. That's a huge damage reduction to Ambush, if I'm honest. Yeah, That's well, yeah, 50, 50, damage, it's 50 off. damage off. Yeah. It, uh, I mean, nobody ever really engaged with Ambush but anyways. Yeah, yeah but you're, you're able to come in from downtown now, like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my, hi, my, my hi. I'm Valera. I have a my, I have an effective range with my ambush abilities. That's effectively two monitors. <laughs> I hope you're playing so four K, like. guys. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I'm looking over some of these talents, and one I already take a lot. Thir Thirteen death from above. It's gonna if you ambush somebody, it also reduces the cooldown of vanish. By four seconds okay if they haven't changed that 20 that reduces they changed some it, of the it, 20s they, they did were, they removed night slayer so yeah that so that's, that was, balances out that was the three second uh removal or cooldown reduction of three seconds for i was vanish. gonna say if that was still in the game 
that's going to be absolutely insane because that's almost a no cooldown vanish. So, okay. I'm actually glad that's gone. <laughs> Otherwise, that's not fair. That's completely <laughs> broken. So. And then our, uh, our last stealthy is Zeratul. Um, so he got uh, Vorpal Blade, the one talent, is baselined, which uh, you teleport to the last person you attacked. Mm -hmm. um, which everybody picked that at one anyways, so that's good. Um, and then the biggest deal is that they changed his heroics. So Shadow Assault is gone, rip, um, and his new R is Might of the Nerezim. So after using ability, your next basic attack within six seconds deals forty percent more damage. So it's a uh, it's a passive, by the way. Yeah, it's passive. I forget what that's level seven talent that is on a lot of people. That I can't remember the name of. Um, focused attack. Is it focused attack? Yeah. Okay. And then the active is duplicate the last ability cast. Damaging abilities deal fifty percent less damage, and the the ability does not benefit from talents, and it's on a twenty second cooldown. So, you can double blink, you can double cleave, you can double W thing, or E, the slow glob that I don't remember the name for. Singularity spike. Singularity spike, yeah. It's a glob thing I like. Yeah. I don't know so, why I know the name is Talents. I never play him. <laughs> I still... I mean... I think you have to give Zeratul an ult that says kill two enemy heroes before he stops taking Void Prison. And honestly, I really want to like Might of the Nerism. I can't, though, because it's that 50% less damage thing. You take that out, I'll seriously consider taking that ult over Void Prison. Because that... You jump in, pop, pop. That is somebody... You, you, you know, you jump in... You know, please someone, singularity spike, or, you know, whatever, double cleave somebody, singularity spike, blink on them, vorpal blade them, you know, get mm -hmm. in their, in their hair. And that is, that is someone is going to die from that. You know, there's n uh, not a tank, you yeah. know? So I just I I, I want to like it, but if they take out that fifty percent less damage, I, that would that I think that would be competitive with Void Prison at that point. I don't I don't know. I mean, Void Prison's just so good. Well, like, yeah, it, it has always been one of the best heroics in the entire game. Yeah, uh, and it's weird because like some of the best heroics in the game don't deal damage at all. Yeah, Void but Prison, I mean, Force Wall. Like, yeah. they, they're just incredible talents that just simply don't do damage. They control the battlefield for, for your team, you know? And here's a disclaimer. If you're, be if you're like, platter below, you probably can't use Void Prison. You probably shouldn't take it. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> it's just, you, you can't. And, like, I'm plat. I struggle using Void Prison well. And I have Zeratul like level fifteen. Um, like it's an incredibly powerful heroic, game-winning heroic, but you have to use it right. Mm -hmm. So, like, to the everyday player, there's probably a good argument for them to take the other ult. Yeah. If we're talking about like ideal Zeratul play, no. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah, some of the, some of these uh, storm talents that are really interesting. Uh, Twilight Falls activating my museum resets cooldown on all of Zeratul's basic abilities and shadow mending. Zeratul heals himself for seventy five percent of ability damage dealt to enemy heroes. Oh my god! If you get like a three man cleave off or something, that's like half his health right back. Yeah, that's gross. Yeah, it's pretty gross. And it's just a passive. That's gross. That's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't really put that in it. That's disgusting. What will Glau do with that? 
<laughs> well, if uh, Blizzpro taught me anything, he's going to give it to somebody else and play support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. You guys thought I was going another direction, oh. but I didn't. Like yeah. the looks on your faces. That was great. <laughs> that made that made my night. No, it was good. Uh, I guess a, a small note: uh, Artanis got reduced to seven thousand gold and six hundred twenty-five gems, or what this patch will be reduced. Um, it seems like Blizzard is more aggressively reducing costs of heroes. We had, I think, Li Ming just recently drop in price. So I think it's always good that uh, newer players or more casual players are able to get uh, more heroes a little mm -hmm. quicker. All right, here's your argument for uh, for coming out before the end of the year, Jimmy. Okay. It has the Winter Veil bundle on this patch. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's Speaking true. of Winter Veil, have you uh, ha have either one of you logged into the PTR? I have no. not, but I've seen the images of some it's of these skins. The be no, no, no. Just the splash screen. Oh, it no. That's the... Nightmare Fuel. Forget that. I don't like you. What? Are you kidding? It's the best splash it screen. Has that dumb, it has that dumb gingerbread skin. I don't think I need to repeat that one. That is, I I, I logged down to the PTR. I was like, oh, that's so great. I'm in the festive mood now. I'm ready for the holidays. There we go. <laughs> I, I actually, yeah, I actually like kind of really brightened my day. I don't know why. I don't know why either. So, it's been a weird few weeks for me. It, yeah. I, so, I totally understand. Yeah. Um, Let's, uh. Yeah, let's move on to some esports stuff. Uh, Gold Club World Championship is returning. Um, and if you remember last year, it was a fun uh, event for some of the best player or some of the best teams in the world. I think what will be interesting about this is a the lineup and b that some of these lineups are very different from what we saw them a few weeks ago. And so it'll be fun to kind of see uh, where they're at before HGC. But the participating teams in the 2017 Gold Club World Championship are Super Perfect Team, CE, Beyond the Game, Fnatic, Team Dignitas, Ballistics, KSV Black, and Roll20 Esports. So Roll20 getting the nod there from NA. So with, uh, I guess, MVP's not there because KSV is? Uh, that is, I think, that is I think MVP. They, yeah, okay, that is okay, MVP. Okay. okay. I'm reading sense. something like, well, about that. I don't know that. why some <laughs> other weird, someone with the name team got invited instead of MVP. Okay. I so, would like. Oh, does, does MVP win this again? Probably. Probably. I I would like to make a note. This will be the first tournament in recent memory where Chinese players didn't have visa issues. I wonder China. why. Yeah. Hey. Now, okay. Hear me out. I think Roll20 is going to have a surprising showing at this. Because it's the tournament after BlizzCon. All the teams are kind of in a relaxed state right now. And Roll20 is probably going to be really hungry with this new roster to prove something. Mm -hmm. I think they end up doing pretty well. Because Dignitas haven't had that much time with the new roster changes. Fnatic hasn't had that much time with the massive roster changes they Neither had. Has rolled... what, what, where, where, where did World 20 change? Uh, they brought in... Prisma Cure? and Glau are out. Uh, and Cure and... I don't remember who is the other that, one. Okay, so that's going to be a really big change. That is not something World 20 deals with quickly. I don't know. I don't. I. I don't know in this case because they're replacing Glau with a better Glau in Cure. Like, and they're they're getting they, like, they essentially filched Team Freedom's two best players in their 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 carry and their their support. Maybe they're better players, but playing with 
Glau has got to be much different from playing with Cure. Yeah, okay. How are so that's the... what I'm saying. I'm, like, I'm saying, like, Roll20 is forever a worse team with that lineup. I'm saying that, you know, at the Gold Club World Championship, they're a worse team. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'd go as far as say the worst. Did you say the worst team or I didn't a say the worst, worst team? team. I okay. did not say the worst team. <laughs> okay, that, I thought I heard the worst, and I was like, no, he might have said a worse team. Not yeah, the they team. are worse than they were before. I, I don't know. I really have to look at all of the, all of the regions changes. To yeah, it's it's a like, little tough because there's cause all so, so much going on right now. Yeah, like. Benny is in Dignitas. And Dig, yeah. No, else. Benny's in Fnatic. Fnatic, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. He was. He went to one of them. Does this mean I have to hate Bad Benny now? No. Okay. Don't I think it just dare. means I like Fnatic a little more. <laughs> yeah, that. I don't well, hate them well, anymore. Well, Shvimpy is out at Fnatic, so Shvimpy like I really. Is indeed gone. Uh, so I don't really have a uh, my profound dislike of Fnatic is kind of gone. I still hate Team Freedom though. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I really like Tempo Storm, though. I know we're kind of just talking about yeah. all these, these silly like the, changes. The, not all of them are final yet, but Tempo Storm's new roster. Uh, let me bring that up. I, 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 let me just so I remember who it is. It's a uh, fan, Glaurung, and uh, the rest of the, the team, Solemn Caterpillar, and June. Like... Tempo Storm and Roll Twenty look monstrous. Like those, mm-hmm. those look like. I like, agree. Once they, once they get the the kinks worked out, like Carl said, there <clears throat> there will be kinks. Like, yep. Those two teams look absolutely terrifying to me. Yeah, and what these rosters, for me, I, I really like them, but it also makes me wonder, what in the world is Gale Force doing now? Because they have a lot of stuff to to fill Jay, on that team jay shred he's going he's going to he's going to gfb <laughs> that's that's his team oh my gonna goodness gonna have all the flex in on it gfb they're gonna yeah. you're gonna do it again all flex team yeah all, <laughs> no no i mean like actually physically flexing because he's got those oh yeah he's yeah. got those okay. those tickets to the gun show <laughs> oh so. man that that's what that's what I think. I don't think it's actually going to happen, but I would love to see that happen, because he found an NA team. We just don't know which one it is. Mm-hmm. He's being really hush hush about it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these teams are kind of being hush hush right now. Um, and stuff is still really in a. I don't know how to say it. Uh, limbo. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Black should take this. If not, ballistics. I will be shocked if, well, I don't know because we've never, we haven't really gotten the chance to see a chi- an actual Chinese team that wasn't, you know, a sandwich shop. You know, take well, on the, MVP Black or K I, KSB. I think, well, Black. I think the last time we saw that was, um, Gold the League, Asian like, Championships like, last this this uh, past Eastern year. Clash. Eastern Clash. That's I can remember didn't the name they, of it. Didn't they have? visa issues at that tournament too yeah because one of them had like i think it was super perfect team that had all the visa issues at mid-season brawl and it was Not just mid-season like brawl, eastern clash oh okay never mind I'm sorry well, it was just china versus korea and i don't know about visa issues there i know china did about as much damage to korea as na did to eu they won like a game <sighs> Okay, so, never mind. But there's, no, there's no hope for China. If, and I don't know anything about the Korean lineups. If MVP Black or Ballistics also go under like catastrophic role changes, then this tournament's completely up in the air. If one of those two is stable, they just sweep the tournament. I'm looking at the the roster apocalypse thread. Me Sweet. too. It's still it's a mess. I haven't seen anything for non-Western teams on the. So, Korea, so for Korea, EZZ retires, leaving. <laughs> and Hong Kongo and H82 are released from Tep- Tempest. 
no chain of these. Yeah. So I don't know whether but, they don't know anything about Ballistic or MVP, sorry, KSV, <clears throat> or they're just staying the same. And if they're just staying the same, it's a two-team tournament. Uh, yeah, because and, two Korean teams with roster synergy are wildly better than Western teams who just blew up their rosters. So the other player to join Roll20 is Dansky. Yes. Okay, Who's good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but like that would be one of the weirdest moves I could think of. You win BlizzCon and then you shuffle your roster. Like That never made I mean, SKT made happens. changes after winning three world championships. That's just kind of insulting. You know? As as like a fan of a oh, team, if I were a the, fan of a different team. Did the like, cup what about the Cubs? Didn't they make some changes? You had people retire. Okay. And then you had people leave for other teams because they didn't <laughs> the Cubs didn't want to pay them enough. That's that's I guess different. But I don't I, mean, I don't think know. The there's least. a better player out there, you make the change, right? Yeah. I just don't like championship teams like shuffling the roster and yes i did clinch my jaw at every roster moves the cubs made in the off season <laughs> yeah you won no, I, you you did a good thing why so why Great. change it yeah oh so that's what yeah i'm a simple man with simple tastes yeah well, I'm but a cubs fan. yeah if i had to if you put a gun to my head and told me i had to pick a team it would be uh ksb black yeah, that that's the, pretty much the only real choice. I mean, it's not the only real choice if they make big roster changes. It is the only real choice if they don't. I don't think, th- I, and this this tournament is next week. And if there were, there was a roster change on KSV, we would have heard about it. There would have been a, some kind of announcement. Yeah, there. I feel feel like we so heard about this it is. Now. I think it's pretty safe to say because the tournament starts. In six days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So doing a roster change essentially four days out from when you have to be at a venue would be suicidal almost, you know. So I'm pretty sure that KSV and Ballistics, that's their roster. Those rosters are locked in. So, you know, it would be good to see a Korea versus Korea grand final. Yep. Always exciting. Actually, actually, you know what? Actually, it it will be. Because it'll be good high-level hots being played. You know? And who knows? Maybe... maybe Everyone playing Chromie. Yay. Maybe Fnatic, like, maybe adding Bad Benny in was, like, just the change Fnatic needed. And they run out and just obliterate everybody. So. That would be interesting. I don't think it's happening, though. I don't think it's going to happen. Like, I think Bad Benny is a really good player. I think he's going to do well in FNAC, and I think there will be a contender for the title at the next midseason brawl. I don't think they're a contender for the Gold League World Championships. I'm not going to argue that. I'm just trying to be optimistic. <laughs> I'm trying to show hope for these guys. I'm infused with love and vigor for for this upcoming mm-hmm. season. You know? Yep. And it's nice because it's another land, and we don't get a lot of lands. I know. You know? I'm hoping 2018 brings us more lands. Um, uh, but we'll see. Part of me wants H- HGC to go land, and another part of me doesn't, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. I-, I would love to see a weekly format at a studio for these guys. On the other hand, that's a huge life change. You know, yeah. and they're only they're only getting paid twenty grand for for the entire year, or is it per phase? Yeah. I, I believe it's twenty k a year. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not enough. Like, yes, if by some stroke of God I was on an HGC team and I landed in there, I would like, I would actually have to leave the team. Like, that's not that's not financially feasible for me. Mm-hmm. You know. Unless you bought my groceries, paid my bills, and everything like that, then okay, yeah, we'll talk. But yeah, like I mean, 20K... if the infrastructure's there, if they can feed the players and relocate them, and do a weekly LAN event, and that is exactly the direction that needs to go to be a high-level esport. Um, if the funding's not there and we're kind of stuck right here, then we're stuck right here. 
Yeah. We and still get really it, good games. Yep. Yeah, it's still working out just fine. Like, I've been massively entertained with this full year of HGC. You yeah, know? for sure. It was it was much better viewing than uh, the, the regional qualifier format, you know, because I was entertained. You know, I could set my weekend up around HGC. I, I'm going to watch these matches. I'm not going to really pay attention to the other ones. So I'm I'm actually really, you know, excited to see what, you know, 2018 is going to bring for the HGC. Yeah, I think everyone is pretty interested in seeing what uh, that does bring. But uh, also exciting about uh, this event is going to be Junkrat and Alex Raza available to play. So hopefully we see both of those heroes in some of these high level matches at least. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. Or it's not, and we're they're gonna get banned every game. <laughs> <laughs> they're either they're gonna get banned or not picked. Welcome back to unranked draft. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh any closing thoughts though, as we I think uh we're, we're reaching the end of this episode. Um, Patreon.com slash Heroes Power. Check it out if you're interested in supporting the show. All sorts of stuff there uh, if you do decide to contribute to the show. Uh, if you can't contribute monetarily but want to still support the show, check us out on iTunes and review us. Uh, five Star Wars reviews really help the show grow. Um, so go ahead and do that if you can. And check out blizzpro.com to hear the newest episodes of the show, as well as staying up to date on all the current Blizzard news, not just Heroes news, but all Blizzard games. YouTube.com slash blizzpro for the VODs. Discord.blizzpro.com to chat with us throughout the week. Check out the other shows on the Blizzpro Network. West March Workshop on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific. Well met Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific uh, for Hearthstone and Arcane Analysis. For World of Warcraft, check that out on the website. Uh, any closing thoughts before we send people off into the Nexus Sexorus? Hey, Prongles, hit me up for a sponsorship, guys. Come on. <laughs> Once you pop, that's great. I love that tagline. Hit me up, guys. We got to be your surfing piggy. You got to weave that into casting somehow. I, I'm going to I'm gonna figure it out. But Make yeah, it happen. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to make it happen. I like actually might go play some more with the Trogwa... Trogwa... So let me speak pretty, Carl. How about you? Uh, <laughs> uh, Carl, how about you? Where can people find you? What, what are you up to this week? Uh, I don't know what I'm up to this week. Thanksgiving. Uh, do, you th do you have less schoolwork to do than normal they hopefully get some time uh, to relax yeah i'll probably just play i'll play a good amount of hots over the break but i'll be on my laptop which will be unfortunate Ooh, but you still get to play that's all that matters yeah uh, zex before we leave where, where can people find you what are you up to this week uh i am eating turkey and passing out on thursday so we're not doing anything on twitch.tv slash nexus commentaries <laughs> Uh, next week after next, it will be the all-star match, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, captain's draft and three different game modes are going to happen there. Um, Tespa wrap, wrapped up this Sunday, so won't be casting any more of that. Uh, let's see what else I'm down at that point. Yeah. Just find me at, at Zexters or at Nexus commentaries on Twitter. And, and, you know, uh, pounding on the doors of the Prongles headquarters. So I can <laughs> there you get go. That, that get that Prongles sponsorship money. money. Yep. Uh, anyways, you can find me at DJ Tyrant where I post all the stuff that I'm doing throughout the week. Uh, make sure to check out the show's Twitter at, at Heroes Power Hour. So you know when we are going live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, but that'll be it. Episode 124 of the Heroes Power. We will see you next week in, in Nexus. Uh, stay tight. As always, bye.